Thank you so much for uh, joining us for this broadcast. My name is Eitan Shishkov. I live in Israel, and uh, this studio, as it were, is my office in Kiryat Yam, uh, just north of Haifa. In our previous sessions on this topic, From Slavery to Sonship, which is uh, the name that we've given to these four sessions, uh, we've talked about questions like, uh, who am I? Who are you? Uh, what is the value of our life? And uh, now we want to take up another theme uh, here in the final session. Uh, why are we alive here on the earth? What, what's the purpose of our existence? And <clears throat> uh, these are some of the most basic questions that people can ask. Um, they're the kinds of questions that I asked after a good friend who was murdered uh, when we lived in uh, a part of the United States where there were hippie communes and uh, we had farmed together and and shared uh, a lot of wonderful experiences and suddenly he was gunned down really uh, uh, for no reason. Um, he was innocent, he didn't do anything wrong, uh, he was just uh, erased. And uh, I began to think about these questions back then, uh, which was 1972, uh, over 40 years ago. And asking those questions is very healthy. So I want to encourage those who are uh, watching to ask those questions. Don't just uh, flow through life uh, on a treadmill. It's so important to evaluate and to, uh, and to ask and to, to put the questions out into the universe and uh, discuss them with, with family, with friends, with people that you respect. And of course, uh, what we're saying is that the scriptures, uh, the, the scriptures that were originally written in Hebrew, the Tanakh in Greek, the New Covenant, but really the New Covenant was also written by Jews uh, in a very Jewish style. Uh, this, is, this is where we're, uh, where we're to find the answers and where we're able to um, line our, our inner person up with, uh, with the truth of God and the, and the truth of the universe. So, uh, in the last session, uh, we talked about the promise and the, the desire of God uh, to have sons. We talked from the book of Genesis how he said that <clears throat> he was going to create man in his image and in his likeness. And um, this is um, not just a, a, a verse to be tossed off. It's, it's, it's filled with um, amazing uh, truth. For one thing, the, um, the word tselem uh, in his image is the root of the word that we use for camera. There are some cameras that I'm looking at right now, and uh, they're called matzlemot. Um, but the root of the word for camera is tselem, it's image. <clears throat> and so what does the camera do? The camera captures the image of the person or of the scene that the camera is focused on. So we could say that God is focused on you. He's focused on you to a, a, just a marvelous degree. And uh, we spoke about the fact of <clears throat> God's desire and intent to bring forth sons, not just physical people to populate the earth, but in the sense of um, giving his qualities, his inheritance, and, uh, and the richness of his being. And how does that happen? Well, um, <coughs> the, the scriptures talk about the fact that the Messiah came uh, as, as a, a son of God, the son of God, in order to bring many sons to birth. So the, uh, the clear path to becoming uh, a son, to being adopted by God, is for each of us to embrace Yeshua, Jesus is his English name, but Yeshua is, is Hebrew for salvation. Uh, and, and to know that, that through him, God wants to adopt us and wants to make it possible. And, and Jewish tradition struggles with this concept uh, of the sonship of the Messiah. And yet, when we look into the Hebrew scriptures, we come to places like this in uh, the second psalm, uh, where the psalmist says, uh, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. Now, uh, you know, if we're listening to this, 
It sounds to me like it's a conversation between God and the Messiah. And he goes on and says that uh, you will break them with a rod of iron and dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Then a little bit further down, <coughs> God um, basically commands us and says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. So this is kind of odd uh, to be going back into Psalms and, and reading about the fact that, that God has a son. And yet it makes a lot of sense because in order to bring forth more sons, God has chosen one uh, to, uh, to exemplify, to be an example, to, to, to pave the way. And uh, the mystery of, uh, of, of who Yeshua is, that, that he shares both divinity and humanity, is wrapped up in this. And we can easily feel <coughs> the heart of God. And that's, that's what I really want to uh, emphasize. In, uh, in 2 Samuel chapter 7, um, God says, uh, I, will, uh, I will be to you a father, and you will be to me a son. This, is, this is, has to do with a messianic promise. And it's not about David, and it's not about Solomon, because he says, the throne will be yours forever. And of course, they died, and their, their kingdoms uh, collapsed. They didn't have them anymore. But the Messiah, Yeshua, is the king of an everlasting kingdom. Uh, this concept <coughs> is important because we have to make a transition. We have to get from where we are uh, to where God is calling us. And, and that's where this um, amazing uh, bridge work, this kind of agency... Uh, is taking place, where just as we read uh, in Exodus chapter 3, that God said, I will come down and I will rescue you. So in this case, God has sent his Messiah to the earth, and his mission, if you will, is to rescue human beings from rebellion, sin, stubbornness, selfishness, um, self-focus, uh, and into sonship, from slavery to sonship. So why are we here? <laughs> why, why, what in the world are we doing here? I think that's, <gasps> excuse me, that's a pretty good question. We talked about the fact that we were created in his image. We talked about the fact that God wants to uh, set us free from each of our uh, personal forms of slavery. And then ultimately we agreed that God wants to free us by the blood of the Lamb, and bring us into a promised existence. No, it's not going to be uh, a life without trials. It won't be, you know, uh, everything coming up roses, as the old song used to say. Uh, there are hardships. There are tragedies. Uh, however, the, um, the bottom line of, of why we're here uh, is to reflect the image of God in the earth is to make him known. And uh, it's, it's so beautiful. There, um, there's a, a, a verse in the book of Romans, again, this book that was written by the, the Jewish apostle, uh, Paul or Shaul, and he said that our destiny is to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. That one statement <laughs> is enough to rock you. The, the, the realization that my destiny, my purpose in life is to be made increasingly like this, <laughs> this, this man, this rabbi, uh, who, who did not live for himself. He lived for God. He radiated the love of God. The scripture says that God is love. And that is our calling. That's, that's why God created us. That's why he's brought us to himself. I just really want to emphasize uh, this facet of <clears throat> why you're here and, and why I'm here. Um, the apostle goes on to say that um, nothing will separate us from the love of God and that we are more than conquerors uh, in each situation that we face. So oh, sound like grandiose words, but um, building our life on the authority of what God has said, 
on, on his statements and his promises, uh, and then praying those uh, into being and declaring them over our daily life uh, is a recipe <clears throat> for transformation. And um, what's clear to me is that that transformation doesn't stop, that uh, we continue to be changed, uh, as the same author says, from glory to glory. And perhaps you don't feel that way. Uh, perhaps you're listening to me and thinking, oh, Eitan, you know, <clears throat> pie in the sky, it sounds really nice, uh, I wish it could be that way. Um, I'm not ignoring the hard things of life. I'm not ignoring death. I'm not ignoring a loss. I'm not ignoring poverty. But I'm saying that by reconnecting ourselves with the God who released us from slavery by the blood of the Lamb and uh, accepting and, and honoring and fostering this identity and this relationship with him as sons and daughters, as heirs, uh, this is really the key to understanding uh, why we're here on the earth. And so I pray that the Lord will be with you and will guide you and uh, will make these truths very uh, applicable and very real in your life. Toda. Thank you.